On this week's episode, me and Gregor discuss mindset and the key entrepreneurial aspects of what journey you have to take with that mindset. We also discuss my journey and my starting stage with a business. Get ready, listen. Hello, welcome to this week's podcast. Jamie, we are discussing the mindset it takes to start a side hustle and why it's so important in today's world. We touched on this topic like during the week during our quick call jamie i don't know if you remember but our point being that we were looking at our investments the market has had a bit of a term model time at the moment it's taken a downturn in, in a across the board uh particularly due to uh basically many budget releases news in, in in the financial world having an impact on the whole market but me and jamie realized that actually i thought it was quite an interesting topic is we've done all these investing in shares and then we realize what have we actually learned from it from a investment point of view and from a weekly on a weekly basis what do you actually learn from investing we think is a good tool to use but perhaps we're using it in the wrong way or focusing on it maybe too much for what our needs are and then we made the point of say we've lost you know it's not huge amounts but say it's like you know 200 couple hundred pounds here in the stock market but if we actually use that to start a side hustle, invest that into a business idea. Um, think of the learnings we would have had if we just did that and it didn't work. In the stock market, you don't learn anything, you just invest in it as time goes by and it's, you know, but you still have the shares so it could go up in value. So there's, there's that side of it. But if you if we invested that in a side hustle, say we did some Google ads or we started to buy products and try and sell them, we'd have something there, like, you know, there's, there's, there's evidence of work that's been done or something we've bought. But you've also learned a lot. You've learned maybe what's working, what what strategies work, uh, what marketing tools you can use. Maybe you develop new skills in a different tool, or you do all these sort of things that you know, you've lost two hundred pounds in both scenarios from investing and in, doing your side hustle. But different learnings in each one. Um, that's kind of what we discussed earlier on in the week, Jimmy. And obviously, bringing it back into the new nature of this podcast, we are talking about the side hustles that we're running and getting up and going. Uh, Jamie's made a lot of movements. Uh, in the past couple of weeks, he's he's going all you know, guns all blazing. He's certainly putting the the wheels into motion. He's got the engine running. He's got the brain cells juicing. He's got the excitement there. He's you know, look at the smile on his podcast. Um, <laughs> so, Jamie, give us a rundown of where you're at and uh, keep us keep us updated on uh, your situation. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, love the excitement, um, guys. Hope you're enjoying the the new style to our podcast. But so yeah, what have I been up to? I have started a online website. Um, as you may remember, a few episodes ago, we had a family friend who had started a watch strap uh, sort of business online. I thought his model, his concept, was very um, smart. Um, it was well meticulated and clearly something that can be copied. Um, to help sort of you know, the market is so big as he said um, 70,000 people are searching for it so I just went for it I have yes, now well. got them. first of I, all first of all can we just acknowledge that like Jamie well done like that is good like to actually just go like okay this I've seen spots on these doing something that's working and I've taken the initiative to go right I want to do something similar how do I do it and you've actually done something so well done thanks Gary. Um appreciate that Um so what the first thing what did I do first um, so to start off with, um, I figured out what platform I was going to do this on. So it was basically an online shop I'm going to create. Um, so I had basically kind of two options that I was looking at, Wix or Shopify to use. I have used um, both of these platforms actually before. Wix, not as much Shopify a lot. Okay, so I went down with what I knew. So Shopify, I've got a store now. I was then thinking I need to set up sort of like a Google um, sort of link. So then I've got a website uh, or a place to be able to do my ads from so I can do Google ads and help sort of that say things. So I now have that set up. I also have a web domain, which I've just bought and um, which re really lucky enough. If you go on GoDaddy, anyone you can kind of do for the first year, it's actually really cheap when you start off with. So it's like a pound. So it's kind of like, you know, I've hardly spent any money now. I've done a 14 day trial with Spotify to maximize the time there just to get everything as much as I can. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the cheapest subscription me method. So then I can obviously just have a small payment. But the key thing for me is I need to be quick with this. I want to get the website up and running fast. So I've spent a lot of time on basically web with the website, making sure the website works well and has all the things and the tools that are needed. Obviously, in the side of this, you have to know what product you're going to sell. So I've obviously, 
as you can tell, I've gone down the similar route as um, our friend Scott, and I've chose to go for watch traps um, exactly the same. It is a product that I think um, it's just simple. As I said, it's you know storage. You don't need much storage for it. Posting it, it's really small. It can be posted in an envelope. The cost for storage is very little. Like everything around that product just works. I mean, right, I so bring it back in, Jimmy. You've taken the initiative to obviously find somebody who's done a, a product or a service that is fundamentally yeah. uh, kind of low risk to set up, right? So that's the whole point. Yeah. You're trying to reduce your risk. And what you've done is you've reduced your cost to set up. Now, people might go, what do I need to set up and how to start selling? Well, you've got your marketplace set up with a website that is already pre-built for you. So there's less overhead. So you don't need to build a, a site from scratch because you're using these platforms. You yeah. certain at your marketing. So marketing for you is currently going to be a bit of Google from my understanding. Uh, yeah. Maybe you're going to look into the other social media stuff in the future, but you haven't mentioned that. And obviously you're sourcing products. So you've kind of got sort of three things sorted there. Uh, product sourcing for you at the moment is obviously key and you're trying to move fast on that because without any product, you can't sell anything. So that's yeah. your next focus. So I guess bringing it back into anybody who's th thinking of this, it's you've got your outlet to process sales and you've got your marketing tool to get the word out there of your business uh, and what you're selling. There's also the other side of it, which is, um, you know, setting up as a, a legal entity and those sort of aspects, but because you're just setting up um, and you're getting going, you, you know, perhaps, you know, it comes in further down the line and you actually get a trading allowance as a British citizen. So you can actually earn a certain amount tax free. Um, and that's worth looking up as well uh, for anybody looking to that. But Jimmy, it sounds like you're on the road to success. You're, you're making ways in this world. So let's yeah. see what is your plan for sourcing those products? Because without that, you can't sell anything and make money. What's your deal? So um, obviously, um, as our, our friend Scott, uh, used Alibaba, um, our, our sort of website that is designed to get products from China, basically. Um, it's where you buy bulk buy sort of cheap um, sort of products, wide range. So I've just basically been on their website, having a look at um, a range of different sort of suppliers. I have actually done a sample. I've tried to get a sample set across. The only thing with these things, it takes weeks, not days, weeks to get a product sent across. And it also does cost a lot because you're doing such a small quantity. The charges you get for bringing that sort of product across is quite high. Um, not not ridiculous, but enough to be kind of like pushing what you really want to spend on a couple of products when you're only testing the market um, to figure out what you want. So what I have done is instead of cutting, limiting the risk, I've actually decided to go straight to the source um, and speak to Scott, who's obviously got suppliers that work for him and have asked for um, sort of help and advice to see if he's willing to obviously share suppliers that he has because I think there's no point using my time and effort and money to find something that he's already found um, he's a family friend I'm hoping that he's willing to share this information and hopefully I can then use that to start my side hustle and my business so it's sort of that key thing of just getting going um, yeah 100% use, and use resources that are there you know exactly use, use, use what you can have access to and you know do it in a way that doesn't put you out of um you know you want to seem respectable to obviously what the success like scott's had and you know how he's managing his 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 you know side hustle but you know he's done that from scratch he's you know figured yeah. out all those things and you're just kind of piggybacking onto it oh fine loads of people do that and um, but it's about kind of going about and using your contacts you obviously you know why not do that why not reach out and ask you know the worst that could happen is go like oh, i actually don't want to share that with you you know, okay, uh, you can go figure out another way. Like the, you might get a few samples that are not as good. You might get a longer delivery time or something like that, but you know, you figure it out. And now I guess that's what comes back to maybe the mindset of this episode is like, have the mindset to um, kind of focus on action rather than uh, yeah. staying still. And I think, you know, being subject to that as well with like, you know, doing about passive investing in the market where you're just gonna put money to the side, invest, watch your money go up and down and then that's kind of it whereas this takes a lot of learning and obviously when you learn and then you try to process things it takes a lot of brain power and if you're not used to it um it can take quite a toll on like you know you're just trying to stay yeah. focused make sure you're doing the right thing so um what you've done so far jamie i think is really good 
and I've had a look at your website that you shared with me and you know, it's, it looks good. You've got loads of products on there. You kind of making it clear to the user what it's about. You've brought a domain, which is clear uh, to the user what you're selling. It's a single product website. So, you know, what straps, you know what you're going for. So well done for all of that hard work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What I was going to now do is obviously bring it back around. So this episode's obviously all about the mindset. I've had the mindset of being self-sufficient and going ahead and pushing myself. You know, that um, mentality of, you know, the first step of any entrepreneur is just having that self-belief to then just go ahead and control what you're doing. Um, is there any sort of key things, Greg, that you think is um, obviously key to being the entrepreneur? That mindset what is what what would you say is sort of key to getting started i'm you know maybe that the it's hard because i try to think you know i always have loads of ideas and i always try to um come up with new ideas and plans to kind of utilize them and how can i make extra money but then it's yeah. actually committing to something i think is key having that um you could be the smartest person in the world or you could be um you'd have a lot of desires and you could be, uh, you know, motivated, but I guess that commitment to continue with something is key, especially when you're guessing going. Yeah. So, you know, try to, try to hold out for making something work, but the balance is, you know, doing that while reducing your risk. So, you know, the cost involved, so you don't lose a lot of money, but also, uh, you know, figuring out when to say no, like this is not going to work. Um, yeah. So, you know, you're at, you're kind of verging towards a point where you need to push through, where you become, when you come up to uh, barriers, such as, you know, what, what stock, stock, you know, who do I buy from basically, where do I get my stock from? And you're kind of pushing through that. Once you push through that, you've got the other barriers when you figure out, okay, how am I actually marketing this to the right people? What tools are you using? And then obviously you learn more about that. And then as soon as you get your first sales through, it's like, how do I post it? Blah, blah, blah. So all these barriers to push through and that takes commitment. So I think, you know, with the men mentality of entrepreneur, an entrepreneur is, uh, you know, try to try to stay committed to the end goal. And perhaps I, I've sort of realized this through our conversations, Jamie, is maybe like sometimes I just get distracted or I'm not fully committed. I'm scared of that risk. But yeah. part, of, part of being that entrepreneur is you reduce the risk and you accept that there is risk involved as well. So I don't want to say it's, it's, it's having the willingness to fail. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. I, that's summed up. Yeah willing to let if uh, go go all the you know you know go all in and if it fails not to let that disturb you from the next thing yeah that's a um, very good point and i think this is what dad did so this is obviously the the what i'm doing with this um store and stuff and the money that's going to be invested in it is coming from the money that dad has given us yeah for our challenge so that i'm looking at what i'm doing now there's no risk to it um but, but the, the, rest, the, the risk is very small like yeah, relatively very small. and i think with with what we've done and not done in the past because of that mindset of the fear with as you started off the episode with talking about our investing we knew have talked about investing so much over the last few years as brothers mm -hmm. um and i think that has taken away from the aspect of actually just being like oh you know, i tried this and yeah i feel and we've lost, you know, you lost maybe five, six hundred pound, but you're yeah. like I've taken so much from it. And I think there's yeah, one of the so true. That, um, if you're out there and listen to this, like I think if you've got that little bit of money that you're not, you know, obviously we understand the living crisis it is getting hard out there. Mm. Um, but if you've got a bit of money that you're happy to sort of almost lose, you know, if you're willing to let to to yeah. fail, try it. Like I think yeah, that's that, what we mean. Yeah, you're definitely. Doing. That's what that this is about. Yeah, exactly. So obviously we're switching to this. The other side of it is, which we could dive to, into in, in future episodes, is there's risk obviously involved with yours, but obviously relatively speaking, it's, it's, it's lower. But there's the other aspect of like digital products, which, you know, if you if you, if you got a, a skill in making digital products or selling uh, digital assets, you can actually reduce the risk to, you know, just your time invested in making the assets. So you can yeah. sell like, you know, uh, people do spreadsheets and the formats for that and you know for like planning a holidays or there's a software called notion uh which you could use to create templates and actually just digitally sell that and you know so when you make it once you can sell yeah. it as many times as you want 
that I think that's the, the beauty of the digital world, and that's like the lowest probably risk. It's just how yeah. do you market it? That's the next step. The best one I saw was um, if you guys have heard of Etsy, it was someone that was done a uh, selling um, just a digital print of um, the Mona Lisa. I don't know if you've seen this, Gregor. I haven't seen it, no. Okay, so someone someone on Etsy has a digital print of the Mona Lisa up for £49. Okay? Okay. It has sold over 629,000 times, apparently. You see what? how much it's sold. Yeah. And the guy did the calculation. This guy's probably made this print, got the rights to it. Probably, made, It probably did maybe cost him a little bit to get the rights to the, the print or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. But has sold it. 10 times over yeah. and all, he's, he's put it up and that's it he's not had to really do much with it because it's self-sufficient it's yeah. it's a way that you just as long as you if you start selling and get good reviews you're up there yeah there's you know part you know partly it does seem really easy and sometimes like you know if you get a subscription to canva you can easily make some of these assets and you know try and it's just a time invested to it and staying committed to that like if you have an end goal of being like i'm going to create this store i'm going that's going to be my it's going to be my remit um and be yeah. dedicated to that you could you could make it um we you know you think you can make it a success so there's yeah. other aspects but so let's round this up jimmy uh, well i think i just want to give one last sort of example to to the, the episode so good example our dad writing books he spent hours days nights writing this book but the value in his time is slowly going up and up because it's continuously selling so when he first sold the book, it worked out, you know, he was getting paid 1p every hour. But now that he sold, you know, a thousand books, that hourly rate is now worth, you know, £20 an hour. And before you know it, that time that you spend on putting into it, and then once it's up there, the value is going to grow over time. As long as you spend a little bit of time on managing it and making sure it continues to develop and the product sells well, that will just grow your time and your effort will grow and um, yeah. so that's my sort of last thing you know the mindset it, sound, of- it sounds <laughs> like you want to i don't know it's the first time we've kind of talked about that in uh, any detail but as an idea have you thought of that rather than what straps like why not what writing no not writing like digital assets of any sort no it's not something that's on my mind i've never thought about it <laughs> why not? It's, not um, it's not something that I've I think I've spent enough time on to understand or do like I, yeah I can make a spreadsheet but I, I've not you, I mean you people to... sell wallpapers or even just calendars on or stickers on yeah, Etsy or true. even like these um, on demand printer things for like t-shirts true um, I mean I did try that before Gregor if you remember rightly, rationalize. Oh my god, I've totally forgot about that. <laughs> so we'll leave that for another episode. But let's, as he says, round this episode up here. Hope Perfect. you guys have enjoyed listening to the mindset podcast and my adventures on the start of my journey. Um, yeah, so uh, we we will keep posted on Jamie's journey, and I will be feeding into this as well with uh, what I get up to. And we'll continue to focus on the side hustle, the mentality of running that and how to get set up. And yeah, obviously join our journey and seeing Jimmy get his first sale. That's what we're at. We're trying to get that first sale and continue that progress. So Jamie, lots of learnings and we'll hopefully try and be more concise and share those learnings as we move on and we'll get better at conveying them. Peace out. Peace out.